recorded December 13th, 2023. Good afternoon, Roderick. How are you, man? Well, um, somewhat better today. So, so just so people, we, we talked about this last week, <clears throat> Edward and I had planned on being together in person in Houston uh, today, in fact, in uh, for a Houston area user group meeting. I was going to present on security of AI, um, but I woke up Monday morning, thought I could kind of push through and I don't know, I feel kind of still kind of haggard. Today's the day when the cough kind of starts. So unfortunately, but uh, fortunately, let's just put it this way. Um, Edward delivered a session for the Houston area user group today that from what I understand went extremely well and the audience was really engaged and it was a full house. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm feeling bad, man. When you called me and um, I, I, I first thought you were just going to tell me, Hey, I'm going to be here and there. You're like, dude, I have the plague, the pox, the worms. I'm not going to be able to make it. It's like what? <laughs> and um, I was, I was, you know, no, no big deal. I, I, I got to talk to the, um, the event coordinator, uh, Stephen from Invoke uh, Technologies or Invoke Partners LLC, really cool partner. And um, I was able to pivot. Um, the original topic, you know, that you were going to present was going to be around security and, and AI and responsible use of sort or securing AI in a responsible way. Uh, so obviously I, I couldn't present that. So I was going to pivot to you know, talking about one of the products I support for Microsoft. But I ended up just talking about uh, Microsoft uh, Defender for Identity, the maturation of the product, and started to lay it off about ITDR, which is identity threat detection and response, and how MDI plays a part of that, since I have done two previous uh, things on it. It was very well received. Uh, you would be surprised. I thought it was just like a buffer session, get everybody warmed up, because I went first this morning. Uh, how many people who are not familiar with the product? And I was able to go from 100 to about 300, we're spending, you know, majority of the time on 100, say 50 percent, 25 percent on the 200 level, and the last, you know, two or 25 percent of the time on the 300. We never got in the full. Edward, you've 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 frozen on us. Let's see. Ah, let's see. See if he comes back. All right, Edward. So from what I heard, it went extremely well at uh, Noodles here, by the way. Um, and Edward is frozen in time. Thanks for um, checking that out. Maybe he will have to reboot. I'll have to text him here in a second just to let him know. Um, but from what I heard already today, and I, I also wanted to mention that um, I had a bunch of people reach out already uh, that expected me to be there, but, you know, had well wishes and want to connect later. So I thought that was super awesome. So I want to say all those that are listening in just to thank you for reaching out and again for the well wishes. Edward, are you back? I am. Uh, no idea what you, happened. I'm, I'm, you should you should probably not discuss where you are because those network issues would not look good on a certain uh, employer that you... I'm in the Microsoft <laughs> office in Houston, and, 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 but obviously I, I am on my device and, and not on the corp network because it could probably filter some of that. Uh, it's it's just spotty. I, my apologies. But the session for those that saw me interrupted, uh, session went well. Um, yeah. I think the 400 level that we didn't get into, uh, there would be a social after the event and people wanted to talk some mm -hmm. deployment scenarios what to do behind proxy, things along that line. So yeah. uh, quite a few Microsoft people presented. Uh, ran into a buddy that I used to work with at Microsoft, John Wojan. Uh, he presented on Security Copilot. Uh, mm -hmm. Another former uh, Microsoft guy, Gene, who's here, he's going to present on Modern SOC. Uh, he's, got a, to meet he's a guest, and, uh, one of our old guests as well. On the show, yeah. Uh, got to meet a very uh, smart young lady, uh, Camilla. She talked about uh, SASE and Microsoft Secure Edge and has agreed to come on the show to talk about it. 
and what oh, that actually awesome. encompasses. And we pump the show up and should see more followers. People want to listen to the show. So um, for those who don't know, Hasmog, Hasmug, uh, Hilo, uh, Alpha, Sierra, Mike, Uniform, Golf is a whole <laughs> system center uh, user group that's been around for a long time. Right. Oh, and long time, was yeah. back. Um, it didn't show it in the pictures that the event coordinator saw. It was 100 people here. <laughs> so we had to knock down two of the rooms, uh, the things in the middle would be able to get it done. So good times. Uh, other than you being sort of under the weather, man, uh, have you done anything? Actually, so, um, yeah, I was going to take this week, right, use the trip to Houston and then kind of sign off for the rest of the year. I'm still attempting to do that. We'll see what happens. Um, but no, this this week, because I was here, I think I mentioned this last week, but just to reiterate, next next calendar year is going to be super busy with travel and speaking and stuff. We have this Microsoft AI tour that's been rebranded from the Build AI tour that <clears throat> I have joined. And the sessions that I'm doing, so initially there were no security sessions. Somebody raised a whole heck of a lot of heck and got the security sessions put back in. And so I'm, we're actually creating the content for those that those security sessions for AI now, and we're going to start delivering those in January. So we're working on that content this week, which includes things like um, GitHub advanced scanning, also security copilot and some other things and a lot of stuff that I've been working on for the past year anyway. So I, the, I wanted to just sit in bed and sleep, but that didn't happen. Um, if if I don't get this stuff done this week, then I'm going to have to check in every day throughout the holiday. And I, I definitely don't want to do that. So, so I have been working. Yeah. There's that. Um, there's a, a, Edward, you mentioned yesterday, Hey, you're still posting on social media. People don't realize I have most of my stuff automated and the things that I say and do, I thought of them probably a couple of weeks prior. And when you see it pop out there, it's just, it's something that's been scheduled. So it seems like I'm working all the time, but I'm not, you know, I, I've been using efficiency for, for years, long before there was automation and AI, I've been doing my own thing. So. Yeah, I get it. I used to be a fish. Now I'm just fish. Uh, <laughs> here you go. Uh, it's, yeah, I, I got, I'm trying to get some things off my plate because I really want to zero as close to no work to sort of recharge for the next year. I did see your schedule, a possible schedule for next year. You're right. You're going to, you're going to make unattainium status level on a plane um, if you follow that schedule. Well, I um, felt so bad when I, went to uh, Seattle, what, three weeks ago now? I felt so bad because I walked into a Hyatt and they said, well, you've lost your status. We'll, we'll give it to you. We'll give you all the benefits, but you've lost your status at this point. And I felt so bad. I'm like, oh my goodness. So no, yeah, I, now it's like that? a you, and I got to get him back. Did you pull that? Do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> you know who my co-host is on the yeah, show. That's right. Yeah. You know who yeah. my co-host is? Andrea Fisher, you don't want me to get her in here after a glass of Chardonnay. <laughs> um, I'm doing that because I know she's not listening. Uh, uh, yeah. well, matter of fact, poor Andrea. Poor Andrea. Uh, Brody couldn't make it. He had a family um, thing that he had to go take care of. Uh, it's super important. Family stuff, uh, yeah. And I have no idea where Andrea is. So I don't either. Oh, well, you know what? I did talk to her earlier. She was in a car accident last week, and she's having to deal with that today. So, I knew that. I knew she's okay for all our listeners. Yeah. Um, some person hit her car, and now she's just trying to figure it and fix it out. So I, I know that. I, I texted her today a little bit, but I haven't really yeah. talked to her. But she's fine. I think she's just aggravated right now. Uh, this happening during the holiday season. Yeah. Um, but she may have well, some super, super cool things to talk about when she comes back. Sure. Um, back to the tech piece, as she would say, bringing it back in. I haven't really done anything other than a bunch of evangelism, some uh, some demos, some labs. Uh, but those are important, though. Don't discount those. Those are, yeah, super important. Yeah. 
uh, setting up my tech stuff and setting up my training. Um, I am starting the study period to take the uh, the SANS GIAC 508 course, the Advanced Endpoint Forensics, or uh, as it's saying here in the class, Hunt Evil. Um, I got some tips from Frank. Big shout out to you, Frank, co-creator of the pod. And um, that's my 2024 um, professional achievement. One of the three goals I'm going to do, I'm going to achieve that cert. Uh, once I write the exam, which means go take it and pass, uh, it should give me the designation of GF, uh, GCFA, and which is a certified forensic uh, analyst. Um, as I understand, it's one of the more difficult exams that they have. But you know, if it wasn't difficult, would it be worth it? So we'll see. Speaking of Frank, um, remember? Did you see that email that he sent us today? There's a they're getting ready to redo the SC two hundred, and they're asking mm -hmm. for feedback. I'm gonna put the link in the in the chat yeah. so everybody has it. So. So you have a chance to affect possibly the content of the new iteration of the SC200 exam, which in itself, when our actual experience was challenging, I suspect even with verifiable skills, but not day-to-day -day operation, in it, I don't see it getting any easier. <laughs> right? They're just going to add XDR to everything. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. XDR to everything, probably. And, um, and and, that, and that's good. I'm going to get some feedback on it on the plane when I got to make my trip back home. We'll, we'll see. I think you have a two. What's the deadline? Uh, let me look at that real quick. It is December 23rd. Have until 20 the 23rd to participate. Ten days. Yeah, ten days. Um, yeah. Other than that, I'm looking at a couple of private preview things that are coming out around. Uh, Defender for Cloud Apps, uh, the, and a new set of updates for MDI. Let me give a couple of things about that since I've been presenting on Microsoft Defender for Identity a little bit, so everybody can go take a look at these. Yeah, It is a credential uh, detection and now response mechanism. It's part of the XDR, which is part of the E5 security suite if you consume all of these things. But one of the more noticeable things, it's been out a while, it's not net new. It's about five updates. I'll give one of them that's pretty good. MDI allows you to create an account that can take actionable uh, tasks against a potentially compromised account. That's one of the highlights. So when you install it, that's pretty good. Number two, one of the nuances of MDI that it had a 30 day learning period that it watched your environment and wouldn't generate any useful alerting, uh, sometimes even in the event that there was nefarious activity. You now have the ability to turn off that 30 day learning period, which is good. Uh, a pain in the product is that you couldn't see past 30 days. Sort of in line to it takes 30 days to learn. You couldn't go more than 30 days back. That's been extended out to 180 days. So now you see 180 days worth of activity to be able to search. You're now able to search across domains, groups and users. It's another good feature when you're looking for particular things that may not be uh, manifesting in a Defender console natively. You can you still can go into defender.microsoft.com, go down to settings, go to identities, and look at the configuration, and you'll be able to see that. The other one last thing I'd like to talk about for those who want to go lab it out, put it on the main control, and test it out uh, is that you can now set high value target designations. So for those who don't know, you can really set this in some form or fashion. A lot of our products have this. They just have dissimilar names. And 365, yeah. uh, Defender for Office 365 is called Priority Accounts. C-suite, admins, people of high value who may either have access or keys to the kingdom or are one or two uh, entities off from someone. Think uh, chief of staff. You get them, you can probably get their executive that they are you know, working for. Um, and so uh, C-suite uh, admins and stuff. And Microsoft Defender for Endpoint is called HVT. It's a high value target or a high value device. You can designate a device. Uh, think of an endpoint that belongs to one of those high value targets, right? And so you could do the same thing inside MDI where you can set up a high value target so that it gives additional consideration if it sees movement where that, um, high value target is 
is uh, involved. Think of it this way: I can go in. The, I can go ahead and designate uh, Andrea, you, Brody, and myself. If I do it individually, then the heuristics and the learning is not as robust because it's only looking at activities around me. What it is actually doing is allowing you to set high value entities saying that if I start to see a tremendous amount of nefarious activity between Edward and Brody, then that generates even more scrutiny. And then if you do it between the three of us, so it starts to look at the lateral movement potential of it. And you can also assign it against devices and everything. So it's something to go look at. And if you had to look at how it manifests in a sim, yeah. I wouldn't call it a watch list, but it's watch listless. It, watch, it had watch list uh, tendencies where you can you can designate significant artifacts and or entities. So uh, MDI wise, not the most flashy thing in the defender yeah. suite. You don't want it to be. You want to install this product and you don't want it to ever alert you because if it does, someone is either playing around in your directory infrastructure with tools, you know, like Rogue Master uh, running Mimikatz, uh, you know, you don't want any alerts from it, right? You, you want it to be quiet. If you start getting alerts, those are some of the alerts you need to really take seriously. Someone's either playing around without authorization or someone's playing around without authorization. So that's that's my MDI pitch, you know, for use cases today. That's yeah. awesome. And have you got something, uh, Noodle asked a quick question. Have you got an MDS policy for ATP 6 alerting? Um, I would have to go look. One thing I would like inside of Defender for Cloud Apps, uh, also known previously, formerly as uh, MCAS, is that it had a persistent threat actor designation list like you have in the portal that can look at ATPs and Threat Explorer and Threat Analysis and Intel Analysis. That doesn't sort of exist in there, but I sort of suspect that if it's part of the XDR suite, that, that telemetry is being passed along inside of it. So I know Noodle, ATP6, right? Us. <laughs> We're actually Steel Team 6. <laughs> ST6. <laughs> and uh, uh, word on the streets there, Shadow IT. Yeah, I heard there, nefarious, no good. And uh, with that leader being Rod Trent. <laughs> All right. Um, so did we yeah, before we <clears throat> invite our guest on, because this kind of sort of plays to our guest anyway, next week is our next week, the future, which our guest actually lives in. We'll talk about that here in a second. Next week is our holiday episode. We have, I don't know, 1,000 people that will be here with us. We'll see how many actually show up. But yeah. Noodle will actually be on camera next week everybody everybody's taking bits on what noodle looks like does he look like a noodle yeah or does he look like a macaroni he needs to wear a noodle noodle hat. hat yeah like a <laughs> yeah, um when is frank coming back to the show i do not know uh frank called in rich he doesn't have time for his lowly peon so uh, i talked to him on a regular he's he's i may see him tomorrow so uh he's always invited to come back on he just has so much going on and he asks how the show is doing, what we're doing. He occasionally listens. He so. does. He, he does more than more than you think. So, and, and I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. He does. Um, so now that we see in the green room, our guest is actually doing something, not paying attention. It's time to bring them on camera. <laughs> <laughs> they there don't we know. Go. Them. Speaking of, our guest does live in the future. I believe it's like seven a.m there or a little bit after now almost 7 30 so you should be fully awake now hey joe would you like to introduce yourself hi everyone konnichiwa. konnichiwa yeah it's uh hello in japanese uh hello uh, rod and uh, edward thank you for inviting me today um yeah i will introduce so i'm uh kijo Drowdy. i'm living in uh, uh tokyo japan so like rod said like i'm living in the uh, future like <laughs> on 7 a.m uh on thursday <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much for today uh, inviting me again. Well, I'd like to say thank you for, you know, agreeing to come on and being accommodating of the time zone. I'm infinitely familiar, having spent a lot of time living in Japan and 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 having family and friends there. Um, I follow you 
very much so on LinkedIn. I love your your posts. They're, they're one of the most impactful and immediate use cases I can see. Your your GitHub repository is on par with anybody, right? Uh, you make it available for you know advanced threat hunting, advanced forensics. Uh, we're going to put the link to it in there. Um, as such, you know, we were talking about demos and stuff, and I'm like, well, we, you really don't want to run into in the demo, but I would like to ask you a few questions. Um, I know what you do, but what do you do? Can you give everybody, you know, what, what, do you, what do you actually do for a living that makes you write all these outstanding hunting queries? Okay. Um, so, for, all right. So first, uh, uh, let me talk about what I'm doing every day as a, my job. Like first, uh, first, uh, I'm working a, a fast track team, uh, specifically focusing on the deployment phase. So I help the enterprise customer to deploy the uh, Microsoft uh, Defender XDR and other Defender series as well. So as objective is to deploy. Uh, and make them uh, happy, the customer. At the same time, uh, like you said, uh, I'm working on the, some uh, uh, GitHub repository, uh, providing the uh, out-of-the-box uh, KQL queries and also researching some cybersecurity. So uh, the reason why I started uh, these uh, uh, activity is uh, that I have a two uh, the reason. So the first one is I really wanted to help their Everyone ex uh, externally, not only their my customer, but also their other, you know, the customer or even engineer uh, who have the same uh, problem or challenging. <clears throat> so the other one is the um, I would say I wanted to grow the my career uh, and I wanted to expand my knowledge and then the skill in terms of the cybersecurity. That's why I started the uh, uh, GitHub, and then every day. I write the KQL queries based on the customer feedback. Also, the, I got some inspiration from the others, you know, the queries. A number of the people are the main thing, uh, you know, the creating amazing the queries. So that's why I use it. Sometimes I take the uh, the query and then change the, uh, some sentence or, you know, combine with the, my original query with the other someone, the query already done. So uh, that's uh, every day I'm doing that. Uh, also, yeah, one more thing is uh, I'm also working on the, the research note. It's not really the research like uh, what they're, everyone's thinking, but uh, the, the research note, what I focus is something I learned uh, day to day and then try to uh, output something I learned. So focus on the cybersecurity in general. The other one is like a more product specific. Oh, yeah. Thank you for mm -hmm. the, sharing that uh, uh, my GitHub. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll I'll include the uh, the link to uh, something's going on with YouTube. Looks like yeah, I'll, I'll include the link too. But hey, here's also a blog post on adversary in the middle. So there's a lot of stuff that you have out here that just really good. Yeah, it, yeah. it's it's, it's your 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 blog posts are you know very tactical, right? Meaning in my <laughs> You, you could very few can you cut and paste and use right away, and I like that you can go in and, and now saving all these advanced queries, either put them in the compute uh, community inside the portal or just put them in VS Code and saving them, whatever you're saving, manner of choice. But you have so many, so I'm going to ask the hard question you know, of the work that you've done within the last you know three months, let's not go too far back. What are your top five that you've written, or if you're tracking downloads? What are your top five that you see that people are downloading using? If you keep track of that stuff at all, uh, what's the f five the things that the uh, I mean the I mean that audience people, that, yeah, that they go into your GitHub when you post it or something they grab that one or they're for it or stuff or, or the top two whichever one. Yeah, I, I'm stats hungry. I watch that stuff like it's like it's the lottery, like it's like it's the stock market. I don't know how many yeah. people actually do that though. Yeah. Do you have a favorite that you write or they're, they're all your favorites? Tito. Uh, he froze uh, up. Hello? There you go. You're back. You're back. Uh, yeah. I think a number of the people will 
mostly visit the uh, uh, KQL repository rather than the uh, product research node or research node because uh, they always are looking for the, you know, the out of the box query or they want to uh, change a little bit some sentence, I mean the code. So that's why first in terms of the repository, they will definitely go to the KQL repository. But in a KQL repository, I, I got the, mostly the feedback for the endpoint, like they're more, um, enjoyable and then uh, looking at the uh, endpoint related to the query. So mm -hmm. specifically Defender for endpoint, even uh, the helping the customer, I can see that the number of the people are, they are using the Defender for endpoint or more paying attention to the endpoint solution. So mm -hmm. I don't have a specific uh, uh, out of the box queries, but I always uh, receive the feedback regarding the endpoint related. Yeah. The other one is like uh, I, create uh, uh, two or three, not cheat sheet, but uh, quite a simple uh, PDF to uh, map the whole the KQL uh, action type, specifically related to the Defender for Endpoint web protection uh, to track the web content filtering, indicator, a smart screen, network protection. These are URL network related activity. They're quite difficult to track because we Normally, we don't know that what kind of the uh, action type exists. That's why I just uh, mapped it into the one PDF, uh, I think six or seven months ago. These were quite, I received a great uh, uh, feedback and then everyone access it. Yeah, I wanted to share this again. I thought this was super ah, interesting. Sorry, you, you can go to the KQO, uh, learning this KQO, one? yes. Yeah. Sorry. Also, the recently I tried to change the old repository, so that's why a little bit uh, different from the if you guys uh, visited the last time. Uh, can you click the KQO effective use? All right. And uh, zero uh, zero eight, I think zero eight. This one. Yep. Yeah. Oh wow! Look at that. Nice. Wow. For so, those that are not watching this live, you need to be watching this live. Yeah, you need to. That's well, I'll, I'll include the yeah replay video here. And uh, z zero uh, zero, I think uh, zero nine. I sorry. There's nine. Zero nine. Yeah. Ooh. This is the. Uh, I love that. It's super simple, but just uh, I. There, I created two PD, uh, PDF. One is uh, to uh, help them to understand how to track the each different feature in the Defender for Endpoint. But this time is like uh, uh, not really different uh, action type. It's more like a specific looking ASR roles in the Defender for Endpoint. But just the idea is to show the visualization we can track them to understand the whole ASR roles activity by using the uh, KQ and look at it, you can see that how many, you know, the different role, uh, I mean, detected in your environments. It's like uh, easy to understand the day to day. Like, so that's why like, I created two PDFs. Uh, these are quite <laughs> striked. Like I received a number of the feedback, even LinkedIn and then other X. So I think that would be uh, at the moment, everyone busy to this part, I feel mm -hmm. like. But now, nowadays, I really changed the whole the repository. I tried to reorganize the old queries. So now we are looking at this uh, repository. But uh, in a in a couple of months, I would say I'm going to change the repository. Now uh, you can see the endpoint. Uh, sorry, when you click the endpoint, this is already I have already done. And I'm going to announce the next week. To be honest, <laughs> uh, I changed the old uh, queries specifically Defender for endpoint. So I previously I received a number of the feedback like it's quite hard to see because I wrote everything uh, YAML based. It's like really mm. look like a detection source, but I tried to uh, make the everyone to use easily. That's why I changed to the MD you know style, and it, you can just really copy and paste. And sometimes I add uh, the screenshots like uh, what is expected the results, like uh, some uh, caution, uh, what's kind of the table we use, like really uh yeah changed a lot <laughs> so mm. this yeah is, that's this uh, is awesome yeah yeah, yeah this is awesome i i have to say probably and kijo you probably agree with me one of the best things that microsoft has actually created in the last 10 years is probably kql 
Because I think it's <laughs> – and I'm not, I'm not overstating that. I think this has been one of the things that has been much easier for our customers to learn, much easier for them to share, create things and share them with other people. It really kind of creates a sense of community, right, and enables you – to reach out to customers and you create one solution that all customers can use instead of having to try to figure out how to get it to everybody at once, right? Exactly. I, I would say that I, can, I mostly, uh, commonly I received uh, the question from the customer past two or three years. Like uh, first though, when we have the, of course the Windows Defender ATP, uh, it's there is an advanced hunting specifically for endpoint. And then we now growing to the, you know, the Microsoft uh, Defender XDR and number of the tables are convergent. It's okay, but the customer mostly say like, oh, I don't know what advanced hunting is, what is KQO? And of course they try to learn first the uh, KQO itself. And also I learned the uh, KQO. By the way, I look at the uh, KQO Masterland. It's really helpful for me by the way. <laughs> I really have to say thank you. I didn't pay him uh, to say that, so yeah. That's fine. <laughs> Actually, the number of the great uh, resource KC7, uh, of course, the uh, oh, yeah, right. must learn, and uh, some webinars, um, the many. So I would say it's quite enough to learn the KQO from the beginning. But uh, the another challenge is the customer say, okay, I learned the syntax and the basic grammar. So what's next? What's next? Um, do you want to take to some specific data? Uh, for example, they have no idea. That's why, like, oh, maybe it's time to create some, uh, the, you know, the simple query, the out of the box query. You can just uh, copy and paste, and you can change a little bit uh, the code based on what you want, what you expect. That's the easier, easiest you know, way to share the and help them, in, you know, the indirectly. And also, there are a number of the, the people amazing, you know, the queries. So I try to not duplicate and I try to focus on the really product specific. And then now I'm a bit of shifting the direction that only product to the, some more looking at the de specific detections. So that's what currently I'm doing. Oh yeah, this is, I tried uh, to, uh, yeah, three or four, four days ago. Uh, yeah, it's a- uh, Yeah, for those, for those just right. listening, this is new this year, um, SANS, partnered with us and KC7, right? To develop um, a holiday themed KQL case. And it's actually pretty good. So it's Santa, oh, I'm not gonna show you. That. I'm not gonna show you mine, I'm not gonna show you the answers. You'll have to go do it yourself. Um, but yeah, I'll put the link, yeah, in the show notes. But this is pretty cool too, yeah. I'm just uh, stuck in uh, the case for, for now. Like uh, I didn't, I think much of the, my understanding language, I didn't get it the last question. <laughs> yeah, it's really stuck to this problem. <laughs> so I saw that in your repository where you had the PDFs, I was going to ask you how often do you take your queries and turn them into workbooks, which looks like that's what you did because I looked at the KQL and you had the render command at the end, which can drive you batty sometimes because sometimes the resulting data you can't render, but yours render well. Do you do that for all of them or things that just have the most interest? Because I'm a big fan of workbooks because I love the visualization really quick to see. And then if I can't really understand how you got the data to manifest, you just go to edit and look at the underlying KQL and you go, ah, that's how I learned. I really learned KQL from reading, you know, must learn KQL and then taking that and going and look at workbooks and opening up the editor to see and like ah oh, that's how they did that and and you learn so do you do that for all the just little specifications because i the more workbooks the better for me i'm a visual person yeah i would say yes uh because the reason first i, I will I, I would say like uh these query it's not the, you know, the running every single day, like I, like we see that it's a mapping folder, you know, past seven days or uh, even a day-to-day -day detection is like a mapping for the seven days. So we try to look back at what happened the past seven days. But the, the reason I created this stuff for specifically just query is not workbook is um, <clears throat> my customer mostly uh, using the Microsoft Defender XDR so it's like more modern workplace, 
not like a Steam, um, not yeah. not uh, uh, Micro Sentinel. Micro Sentinel has, uh, of course, a great capability, the workbook to visualize the all activities. But uh, uh, our side, like you know, modern work, we still don't have the uh, these uh, capability. That's why, like, uh, the customer using the advanced hunting, and of course, we have the report capability uh, to generate, you know, the whole raw data, the activity, such as the alert, the vulnerability, everything. But uh, it's not really customizable. So that's why, like, uh, by using uh, advanced hunting query, uh, the the people are using only, you know, Microsoft Defender XDR. They can, uh, uh, you know, the visualize all activity. So of course, if they're using the uh, Microsoft Sentinel, I have, uh, you know, the access to the workbook. Yeah, workbook is uh, one of the, of course, great way to track and, uh, you know, the look at the activities. That's the the kind of thing. Of course, nowadays it's uh, in a converge everything, and then you can look at it, uh, Microsoft Sentinel capability as well in uh, Microsoft Defender XDR. But uh, just I was talking about uh, one or two years ago, it's really separated and it's uh, quite limited to access the workbook for the custom, some you know, specific customers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, Cody has actually made a comment. I've heard this a few times. Um, I don't agree personally, but I've heard people say this that Power BI is more, obviously it's got the name power on it, more powerful. Maybe it is, but I seem to, personally, I feel it's a little slower. Maybe it'll improve one of these days, but mm -hmm. um, um, but yeah, a lot of people do use Power BI and, and you do have that capability, right? To be able to export and utilize the KQL queries and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I don't know if you use Power BI or not. But. I, I think, you know, Power BI is, mm, it's a major tomato. I, I think maybe Power BI is more powerful when you have more data rest and maybe f formatted in a way that you're trying to, you're not trying to discover anything rather than you're trying to project it in a manner that allows you to make analytical yeah. decisions. So I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't see Power BI as a security team tool, a SOC tool. I see uh, Power BI as a, manager a SOC manager tool so somebody creates the power bi and then whoever loves the pretty pictures and just likes to be able to click on things and see it see very specific things that's that's the person that uses the power BI. I, I'll, I'll, I'll i'll agree with you and disagree with you on this i'll tell you who would disagree with you on the security standpoint compliance people love power bi it allows them to be able to project processes especially around i mean manifestation of thing processes and and where they are in you know, audits and stuff like that and able to see. So in security RAM, not so much as threat and analytics, but when you talk about compliance and process, you know, they love Power BI because, you know, people out there still using Archer, which is nothing really more than spreadsheets, I think, right? <laughs> they just they're just manifesting that. So uh, it looks like we lost our guest. So something is going on on the big bad internet. Yeah, he'll be back i just uh yeah just send him a note he'll be back um uh cold just said we use power bi specifically for visualizing business data we yeah. use azure workbooks for SOC operations best part about it workbooks being able to go through multiple environments and quickly use the azure lighthouse permissions yes uh within sentinel though they've gotten better you can export that query to a power bi you know uh, file to be able to then import it in i'll tell you who on this podcast it's a Power BI goddess. That sort of gives it away, right? Andrew's really good at Power BI. There she is. That doesn't surprise me. Andrew's good at a lot of things. I know, right? Yeah. She, 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 she always makes my imposter syndrome manifest. So I gotta, <laughs> I gotta well, get and, and 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 she always, I always get something on Teams from Andrea. Hey, you got five minutes? I'm like, sure, I got five minutes. I always have five minutes, and but it's always like. It's always the the hardest question in the world, and I'm like, oh my yeah. goodness! So I'm gonna have to take. Well, thanks for a question. I'm gonna have to take some time to figure it out, and I'll get back with you. She asks me that all the time. Ed, I'm folding space, and the temper mechanics are throwing me off when I come in from the past, present, and, and quantum entanglement. What is the spookiness <laughs> rate? Is I'm like, yeah. I give it an answer three. Okay, I thought it was three. <laughs> Should go right. Uh, we're ribbing you because we were just saluting your brilliance, Miss Fisher friend and buddy yeah. there she is um and so yeah i both of them have 
definitely use cases, but you got to realize they're they're definitely dissimilar thing, which which wasn't the gist of your comment. It wasn't functionality. It's just it was a personal. What do you think the most important thing? Yeah. Some people you say KQL. Someone said open source, which I believe was probably number one. Then Microsoft embracing the open source mentality of a sort. Right. Where did that go? I think that was Noodle that said that, wasn't it? KQL. Yeah, there it is. KQL is awesome, but I think the best thing really to come out of Microsoft in the last 10 years is supporting open source. Well, KQL is open source, essentially. Really? Yeah. QRadar uses KQL. We've open sourced. You stick something on a GitHub repo and say everybody can have it, submit some escalations, and sure enough. Well, educate me on this before we get back to our guest when he joins back in. Define open source because I I have a go. little bit of time visualizing how KQL is run outside. Of, Sorry, okay, I, I, I think I kicked up my Wi-Fi to, <laughs> just, I'm so sorry about it. <laughs> it it's fine. Mm-hmm. Time okay. travel is hard. You have to come back into the past. <laughs> your and we yeah, were just talking it. about t- Yeah. Appreciate you doing uh, that twice too. Cause I know I've seen the movies. If every time time travel just wears you out. Wears sorry. You I out. Think, sorry. So was good. Uh, uh, I'm going to agree with noodle open source for the win. Yeah. That the, are the the willingness to embrace an open source methodology and some of the ways that we're doing stuff. And if that's the case, then open source trumps KQL because KQL is a resultant of open source. It's true. There you go. Um, uh, yeah, and KQL is supplied by Kusto clusters, which is not Windows servers. It's what? Well, in Azure, man, seventy percent of all the server work class workloads are are some flavor of Linux, whether it be Ubuntu, yeah. uh, whether it be Red Hat. Uh, hey, off topic, and then we'll get back to, I guess, on KQL queries. I was downloading a new uh, distro to play around with, and it's uh, CentOS, right? I did not know that CentOS is a, has two flavors. It's a downstream and upstream. It looks like it's just a rebranding of Red Hat. Our Linux heavies can sort of educate me if I'm right or wrong on that, because I was going through, and when I saw something they said... Uh, 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 set OS stream. It's just an upstream or more, a more um, beta version of Red Hat before it goes. But I didn't. I did not know that. Uh, yeah. Good learn for me there. Alarms going off. They start the podcast when I'm an hour behind. Right. Noodle said Cent OS is going away. So. Uh. Yeah. And who on the on the show would show our hands or fans of uh, is Gentoo the same thing? Just a distro of CentOS, or is it separate? No, I don't remember. But uh, I guess everything's going to be Red Hat for the world. We'll see. I actually installed a log collector early in the year to see if it would run off a door, and it actually worked. Did that just to play around with the customer. So back to our guests and talking about the KQL, things like that. Um, we see the result in good work, and I may have asked this question. Can someone submit something via your LinkedIn to ask you for help to say, hey, I'm trying to do this visualization or I'm trying to write this query to get this? Uh, that's how you get ideas or you just sort of be careful how you answer that. Yeah. Be careful how you answer it. You, you'll get, oh, so you want to help, huh? <laughs> so What's that LinkedIn profile again? There you go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so for mostly my the source for the what I say the feedback is for uh, from the customer the engagement in a Microsoft work. So I don't really look at the LinkedIn because the, the things is I try to uh, separate the uh, the work and the LinkedIn. That's why like uh, I look at some message, but of course I cannot really um, you know the <laughs> make it the query that what they expect. So that's why I try to. Look, but uh, uh, mostly I use their SNS, like LinkedIn and Twitter is for, you know, the sharing the, um, the queries and something I learned or the defenders news. So that's why like, uh, yeah, just a look, but uh, not really response or just, uh, uh, I would say, you know, make it uh, well in the end, like uh, try to do my best. That's uh, currently what I'm doing. <laughs> well, and, and I'm looking because 
all of your stuff's on GitHub, right? So people can make comments and create pull requests. So that's, to be honest, that's probably the best way to accomplish that if someone has trouble I, with I, the query or- I, I do query. agree, yeah. Yeah. So I see you do have one pull request right now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm going to make an experiment to sort of come up to speed on some of this AI stuff that Rod, you and, and Andrew have been sort of playing with. Brody and I are sort of lagging. I'm going to take some of these high performance Git places and use your content to create my training models and then go ask ChatGBT <laughs> or OpenAI, see if they can write a query for it. Yeah. Rod, you probably already done that, grabbing everybody's stuff <laughs> and throw it in to see. Uh, but I, I, I don't. I, I, yeah. I, I, I have the uh, had the KQL docs and the Azure Monitor data table references fed into my in my chatbot. Well, oh, I, that's cool. I don't want to use it where the query, the schema, and the tables are the source content for it to think about doing it. I want to take proven queries, oh. maybe find a delimiter that says <laughs> this is the start, this is the finish, and see if it can come in and say. It, so, so, suppose you just give me six queries and they all do the same thing, but one of them is more efficient than the other. I want well, to come a, in. Also, um, I'm putting a link in the, in the show here. KQL search. I don't know if anyone's actually used this. One of our awesome security MVPs has put together this resource. And if you go there, it used to be you just searched for all the queries and he collected the queries from all the different GitHub repositories. But now now he has chat GPT capability as well. So if you're oh. looking for a query that doesn't exist in his search engine, you can it can create one. Now, chat GPT is not super great with KQL queries. So you're still gonna have to still gonna have to work with it to make it work the way that you want to, because chat GPT has no clue the different data tables that you have in your own environment. Um, so it'll give you something that looks good, but it's not going to work with what you have in your environment. You have to do that yourself. I think I sort of pivoted back to say instead of chat GPT, I was going to use Azure Open AI so I can control the data models in it, where it goes and look. Right. Yeah. So if it's if it's hallucinating, it's because I put bad data in, you know, either deliberately or indeliberately. Yeah. Well, there's some other things you can adjust to to make it a little more a little more succinct, but yeah. And, and we, we should have a, a show about security references for that. And we sort of talked about being able to control the amount of information by giving it better references rather than raw data types that is searching for LLMs. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll have another show about it. I'm, I'm not well versed enough, but I, I had a brainstorm as I was running the other day. So I said, hey, what if we can do this? So we have about 10 minutes left in the show. So we've been talking about KQL and then we'll go somewhere else and we'll come back in and we'll go somewhere else. Can you recommend a cool tool that you use that you go to? The, uh, sorry, the tool is like... Uh, anything. Anything, okay. Yeah, I would say first, uh, uh, just uh, Rod talk about you know the KQL search. I really recommend the KQL search. Uh, it's quite a good because when you try to look for some suspicious, you know, specific activity, you can type in and it's gonna you know, pop up to some, uh, uh, you know, the queries that, you know, some people already done. So I really, really you know, recommend using that. Actually, I use them once a week. <laughs> My query also was uh, in the, one of the kind of the, the yeah, resource here, but uh, I think I changed. But recently I remember that, um, there should be version two. So version two, it's uh, included the number of the query than the uh, first version one. So I really recommend uh, using a KQL search, especially to look for some specific uh, query. You don't need to look at the, uh, you know, visit the different people's uh, uh, GitHub. It's really combined all amazing queries here. So I, well, I can recommend the tool. I just looked, I searched for one of yours on your GitHub repo and then look, there it is. It just popped right up in KQL search. That's yours. Yes, it's mine. I think it might change because I I changed. Oh, still there. Nice. Uh, because yeah. I already done the changing the repository specifically KQL. Oh, so I, gotcha. I don't know how right. it takes. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. So I, I recommend the first uh, this uh, KQL search. The other one is mm -hmm. like um, to 
to I think most of the people uh, I personally when I talk with a number of the people they're more looking for the contents to learn the KQO because it's KQO is quite new for the people uh, not you know it's like Kustokoi language so in this case I recommend as a tool first is uh, um, you know the KQO masterland I would say this is really helpful to be honest um, because it's really good it's give the not just the syntax with example so i look at the, some of the operator i have quite difficulty to understand so i definitely look at the KQO masterland the other one is like a kc7 kc7 is also quite a great tool uh that i would say the place to learn the KQO because not just learning the KQO syntax they are offering the uh the KQO learning pass with you know the real experience like it they're one of the SOC team and then try to resolve some uh, real incidents so it's quite a more gaming feeling for me it's like not really I, I didn't feel like I'm learning the KQO it's super interesting and also that just before um, I think Rod you you showed that the uh, custom detective agency also the yeah. KC7 also working on it with that so it's what I Try the last Custo Detective Agency. I, I don't feel like I'm really, you know, playing the uh, Custo Detective Agency. It's like really mixing with like KC7 because I already experienced KC7. Like, a, is it a KC7? Like, oh yeah, it is. <laughs> it is written KC7. Like, yeah. it, it, this is a feeling like uh, it's quite interesting. So you can learn more interactively. But again, I would say fundamental is so important. That's why, like, for the people still looking for the KQO uh, learning as you know the basic, I recommend you know the uh, KQO master learn, or maybe they should look at the uh, you know the as some learning path for the KQO. I really recommend that that tool. And I think I think the important thing there is you you highlighted resources that give you hands on because it's one thing to read something. If I'm sitting there reading, I'm doing ten things. I'm not going to retain any of it, but if I have to focus and stick my hands on the keyboard, I'm going to remember that. So. Yeah. And, and everybody's learning methodology. Like I said, yeah. definitely I use, you know, Rob's publication and Rob's, you know, project of must learn KQL because prior to me meeting you, my first iteration of it was working with it. I was thrust into it. And I believe at the time plural site had one called KQL from scratch. It was yeah. free. And it, it, it just wasn't well maintained, right? The demo lab stopped spinning up in the background when you couldn't use it, and then you wrote yours. Um, but I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a person that I need a resulting of my effort. Studying for the sake of studying and not seeing anything to come out of it. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I don't get it. Um, and, and, and so we got KC7, Kilo Charlie 7. We have KQL search. We have must learn KQL. Let's go for one more. Anybody else have a, a two? We'll listen to our guests. If any of our guests have a uh, a source that they recommend, um, doesn't our uh, prior guest on the show, a friend of the show, Max Zorch, have something? What was his outside of the book? Yeah, he, he does have his own repository. That's all collected through KQL Search as well, so you can find his stuff. Oh. Um, okay. We do have an MS Press book coming out in April for KQL. Sure, they do. I'll tell you, someone else that has a good presence and learn it which is uh um he's over in the uk he used to be on the team with me at microsoft was clive clive was yeah. it clive clive is pretty good too uh, what's his I've last name is it bake watson watson I've clive watson, watson. Uh, maybe throw his name in there for those who are looking to follow someone on linkedin and his his, his get <laughs> and he and clive he answers watson. everything on linkedin so go ahead and ask him all the yes you ask him he loves it he especially loves he's it a, he's at he's quorum there. cyber now by the way he's been there for a minute Oh, a long time. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He left Microsoft, went over there. So he's doing good things. So that's a good four. You know, the rounded out, must learn KQL. We'll just give, you know, reference to Rob Trent, KQL search, KC7. And then a person that goes along with it is Clive. Uh, uh, one more time, his last name Watson. 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 Clive Watson. Elementary. That, so. Elementary, my dear Watson. Yeah. Uh, elementary. Hey, well, KJ Kija, what what is your favorite KQL operator? Operator. <laughs> oh, it's a really difficult question. <laughs> uh, Never been asked uh, that before. I, I would say the more I I've, I would say the most kind of 
mm, the query I, I mean, the operator I depend on nowadays is makes, I think make list. Yeah, make oh. list or make set is the most I use because I have a bit of my style for the query is like, a, if you guys look at the, my old queries, all most commonly use a make list because I try to list it whole device. Uh, let's say you want to see that there's some uh, detection for the antivirus. I use the make set and then just detect uh, list it up the whole device and each device it's listed up what time, um, which you know the file was detected, what um, the malware permit it's really listing it. And if you don't want to show the duplicated uh, the data, you can just make a set. It's super useful. And since then I keep using that the make list make set. That's the uh, mm-hmm. yeah. I think most. I would say favorite, yeah, I, because I always depend on the, this operator. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe there's some visual related, some after ren- use the render. <laughs> render yeah, is the most. Render, uh, yeah. I, yeah, like I would say render, the two operators. Render, project for me, and union. Oh. So I, union. I'm stupid. I, I'm silly and stupid. Um, if you If they happen to ever get rid of, and it's super inefficient, and I apologize for this ahead of time, but search. That's the only thing I need. Oh, yeah, but I understand. <laughs> I, 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 have, I have probably crashed a KQL backend cluster. Yeah, yeah, most likely, limiter. most likely, but it's fun. You, you, yeah. you type in search, equal, equal, open quote, and put in the word the. Yeah, <laughs> Close it. <there> you <laughs> I, I would say... I would say the search is uh, uh, most, I mean, the taking so much time, but I would say to really <laughs> use it also, you know, in the beginning, just yesterday, I I was simulating the macOS gatekeeper uh, stuff uh, to uh, install some uh, suspicious ins- uh, application. And in order to uh, successfully install, I had to delete some attribute in a, uh, each the application. It's really Mac OS side, but I used some certain comment to delete it. And after I wanted to track this activity. And then what I used first was I didn't use even make set anything at all, even project, nothing. I first I used search. I put the my you know the the command I you know executed the Mac OS like X A T T R like yeah. so I I would say I didn't well, notice but uh I use the search every day. <laughs> Here, here's here's a tip to that Sans Detective Custo thing. You can pretty much use search the whole every every step of the case except for the last one. So there's a way. That's true. Yeah. The the, the the problem is it. it yeah, it, it'll it'll eat your system. I, they have limiters in now, right? If they see that as the first operator that runs off, won't they limit it, the results? With a well, it'll rules. it'll yell at you. It knows if it's going to take a certain. It's it's not. It used to be records, but now it's 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 time because yep. there's latency and there's things that go on in the cloud that nobody can account for, and so it knows that it's it's going to return results in a lengthy period of time. So it will it will yell at you. They should put a, a, a intelligence to limit it without an additional operator to bring some type of guardrails into it. Uh, but then again, it's cloud power, so if it runs, I, I know that. Log rhythm wouldn't allow you to run search like that. In, well, in the, considering what log rhythm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, Q, curator. Well, considering what I was going to say, log rhythm or curator, considering what their query language is, it, that's obvious. Yeah. It would never come yeah. back. Yeah. It, it, no, you know, your, your drives would spin to perpetuity and fall out of the chassis, you know, even if it was in the cloud, right? But, sir, I want to say thank you so much. Um, for coming on, taking time out early morning. I can appreciate the effort when I was staying over there, having to get used to the time, getting up before everybody else, right, to make something. Uh, Thank Claudia you so has put, the Kuso detectors should really just disable the search function. Yes. <laughs> They've literally yeah. hampered 90% of my skill. There you go. Yeah. Hey, enable me. So, uh Sir, we'll let you have the closing remarks, and if not, we'll go ahead and close the show out. I would like to say I'm a good time for all the effort that came in. And uh, thanks for all our listeners coming on. Next week, the Christmas edition. 
Oh, Come on to the show. Be, it's gonna be glorious. Oh, let's see. Uh, let's see if I can grow a full white beard and a full head of gray hair. I have my <laughs> I week. have my Santa hat. I'm wearing my Santa hat next week. So. I, I have my Santa hat ready. It's a requirement if you're coming on to the show or listening to the show. You got to have your hat on. Right. Yeah. We may give away a prize. Santa Claus delivered something nice to me in the mail. My wife told me today. Well, you know, we got the. Oh uh, my. Uh, Look at the book. book. It's uh, it's up to number ten uh, in cloud computing today. By the way, so we'll, we'll give some of those away. Yeah, Next week. I could use yeah. I could use one. I think so, I definitely need to take it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, do that. So uh, and all the proceeds Saint go Jude? to St. Jude Children's Hospital. Yeah, St. Jude Children's Hospital. I've been a big supporter for ten plus years. Uh, little known fact: I used to sit on their uh, external advisory board. He's to make trips to Memphis all the time to go to the actual facility. Mm -hmm. Long time ago. So, everyone, thanks for coming on to the show on this uh, sort of chaotic internet strong with errors Wednesday. But we really appreciate our guests. Don't be a stranger, sir. Please listen to the show. Leave comments. Um, yeah, we'll find Frank because we need someone to moderate Twitch. <laughs> and he loves Twitch. <laughs> His son's a big gamer, right? So he... He, he loves Twitch. Uh, big shout out to his son, uh, who's a super engineer developer at Micron, who just kills it, mm. right? The chip maker. So he's doing really good stuff. All right, everyone. All right. Talk to you all, all next right. week. Bye. Bye.